Wow, yes, another video of me in this wrinkly Harvard church. I heard about this case that I'm going to be talking about in this video a while back, and I was like, wow, that is fucked up. And now it's kind of starting to recirculate because there was some documentary made about it. It is just such an insane fucking situation. Like, get ready. So if you've never heard of the name Gypsy Blanchard, she is currently serving a 10-year prison sentence for killing her mother. Now, why? Why only 10 years, might you ask? Because, you know, a lot of people will get life in prison or the death sentence for murder. According to the prosecutor of this case, he could have convicted her of first degree murder and sent her to prison for life, but this was an extraordinary and unusual case in which Blanchard was abused by her mother. Get ready for this weird fucking story, okay? So Gypsy's mother's name was Dee Dee Blanchard. She not only imprisoned her daughter, but she forced her daughter to pretend to be disabled. It's one thing to imprison someone, but it's another to force them to live this life day to day in which everyone thinks that she is severely disabled. Like, it's so fucked up that Gypsy's attorney even says that he doesn't think she received any formal school past kindergarten. What? Oh, and by the way, she is currently 25 years old. Back in 2015, Gypsy posted on her Facebook page, the bitch is dead. So, you know, people saw this and they were like, what? So they tried to get a hold of both Gypsy and Dee Dee and no one could get a hold of either of them. Obviously, the authorities got involved in this and they went into Dee Dee's home and found her stabbed to death. Gypsy was missing. Now, everyone assumed that Gypsy had leukemia, a very, very serious disease. She never had leukemia, ever but everyone thought she did. She even was um, always in a wheelchair. People thought that she could not walk, but she could walk. Let me just kind of go back a minute and talk about how their life was prior to this murder. This home that Gypsy and Dee Dee lived in had blacked out windows. Like, who needs blacked out windows? I think it's one thing if you want to like tint your car windows and have them super blacked out, but a house? Like, what are you hiding if your windows are literally blacked out? So like I said, Gypsy is now about 25 years old, and back when she turned 18, her father, who was divorced from her mother, called Dee Dee and asked to speak with Gypsy, which is totally normal. You want to talk to your kid on their birthday. Dee Dee was like, yeah, that's fine, but just don't tell her she's 18. So this girl does not know her age. Dee Dee had always told everyone that Gypsy did not have the mental capacity beyond a four or five year old child. Everyone kind of assumed that Gypsy was extremely disabled when it came to her mental state as well. Not only the whole leukemia situation, which I'll get more into in just a minute. So like I said, Gypsy had no idea how freaking old she was. When she was arrested after this whole murder situation happened, she could not tell authorities how old she was. Like she literally didn't know. Like what? So there is this syndrome that is extremely rare and I know I'm going to butcher the name of this, so I'm going to put it down here. Munchausen by proxy syndrome. So basically what that is, is when the caregiver or spouse of an individual fabricates, exaggerates, or induces mental or physical health problems. And usually the primary motive is to gain sympathy or like financial gain. According to Gypsy, she never really questioned the really severe health problems that her mother claimed that she had besides the whole fact that she had to, you know, live her life basically in a wheelchair. Gypsy claims that she knew she could walk fine, but her mom literally like wouldn't allow her to walk. Her mom wanted everyone to think that she needed a wheelchair all of the time. Later on, Gypsy apparently had epilepsy as well. And her mom claimed that every time she had an epileptic seizure, her mental state would deteriorate. So, you know, if she has the mental state of a five-year-old and then has a seizure, maybe she now has the mental state of a four-year-old. But Gypsy was totally developmentally fine when it came to her mental state. This house that Gigi, Gigi, <laughs> Gypsy, and Dee Dee lived in was actually given to them by Habitat for Humanity because of how ill 
Gypsy was. Organizations and just like individuals would donate to them. They were even sent on a trip to Disney World because everyone felt so sorry for this poor girl. Obviously, Dee Dee was just manipulating the absolute crap out of literally everyone, including her daughter. And I just can't help but wonder, it must have gotten to a point where like even she believed in her own fabrication. Gypsy was on so many medications for all of these issues that she supposedly had, and those medications even caused her to have real health issues because she didn't need those medications in the first place. She was put on a breathing machine every single night. She was fed with a feeding tube and she said that she hated it because the breathing machine, you know, she felt made her breathing even worse because she did not need it. And this feeding tube controlled everything she ate. And she also said that her mother would occasionally put things through her feeding tube, such as her medications, while she wasn't even awake. So really, her mom could put anything into her her body and Gypsy wouldn't have known. Whenever they left the house, Dee Dee would always hold Gypsy's hand, um, which was kind of also another sign of like psychological manipulation. She's really, really, really making sure that Gypsy knows that she's in charge. And apparently, even when they were in like a group setting and Gypsy said something that Dee Dee was not exactly okay with, Dee Dee would squeeze Gypsy's hand really hard and Gypsy would know that she needed to shut up. Even um, Gypsy's biological father and his wife were not able to really ever be alone with Gypsy because Dee Dee basically was like, yo, I gotta be by her side 24 seven. So I just cannot imagine being this poor girl living her whole entire life with her mom lying to literally everyone, but she's also constantly by her side. So I bet if Dipsy, you know, ever wanted to tell someone, hey, you know, I can walk without a wheelchair. This is all BS. Her mom would probably just completely, you know, manipulate whoever they were around even more. And it's, it's just, there's no winning for this poor girl. So Gypsy ended up meeting this online boyfriend on a Christian dating website. She was, you know, very honest with him apparently. It got to the point where they decided they could kill Dee Dee so that Gypsy could be free. What happened the day of the murder was basically this online boyfriend, they were finally able to meet, they had never met before this. He drove all the way to Gypsy's house, he lived in a total different state. Gypsy let him in, he came in and stabbed her mother Dee Dee while Gypsy hid in the bathroom and then afterwards they both fled the scene. She is going to serve 10 years in prison and the reason that her prison sentence was not so long is because, you know, people have empathy for this poor girl. Her mom was obviously suffering from a mental illness that was so rare and so severe and so just insane that it's it's almost understandable killing your mom after going through all of that for literally your entire life. But yeah, there is now a documentary out about this. There's a lot more information that I didn't get to cover just because there's so much information about this case. So if you'd like to learn more, feel free to Google it. Feel free to watch the documentary. It is called Mommy, Dead, and Dearest, which is a very dark name, but Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye.